Hello, Minotaurs and Masochists. My name is CB Sky, and um, since Riot are slowly, very slowly, showing some signs that they might be ramping up production of lore content for champions who have historically been rather underserved for it, I thought maybe it was about time to ramp up the production also on videos exploring the character designs and histories of older characters in League of Legends, which means it's time to ask a question. What is the deal with Alistar? Now, Alistar, like a lot of the very oldest League of Legends champions, has been in kind of a wasteland ever since he was released, where he hasn't really received any lore content. He's pretty much just, it's been balance updates and a single visual update a little while ago just to bring his his um old, old, old character model a bit more in line with the modern aesthetics of the game, but no real lore content, no real story update as to who this guy is, what he wants, how he behaves, and what's going on with him. So, Alistar the Minotaur is a Minotaur, and his story is that he's a Minotaur. I wish... I was kidding when I said it's really that simple, but in a lot of ways it actually is. Now, if you know, know uh, the story of the original Minotaur from Greek mythology, well, there's a couple of stories about the Minotaur from Greek mythology, but the basic gist of the story of the Minotaur goes like this. King Minos um, of the Minoan kingdom promises that he will sacrifice, uh, that if Poseidon sends him a magnificent bull from the sea, in order to validate his claim to the throne, because he can talk to the gods, yada yada, he will sacrifice that magnificent bull to Poseidon, and thus, um, you know, validate his, his claim to kingship. So Poseidon sends from the depths of the sea an absolute magnificent bull up to Minos, and the King Minos takes a look at that bull and goes, that's a really great bull. Sure would be a shame if I had to kill it. So he crowns himself king with the favor of the gods and then sacrifices a different bull to Poseidon, thus breaking his promise to the sea god, who is understandably kind of pissed about it. And from there, there's a number of different versions of how the story goes, but essentially, because of the gods being kind of pissed with King Minos, they enchant his wife such that she falls in love with the bull and has a child with the bull. And that child is the Minotaur. And the Minotaur grows so large and so ferocious and so terrifying that they can do nothing to control him. And so they ask, I believe it's Icarus, to build a giant labyrinth within which the Minotaur will be trapped. And then they send in regular sacrifices of various maidens and youths to satiate the hunger of the beast. In other versions of the story, it's Zeus who turns into a bull and impregnates King Minos' wife with <laughs> the Minotaur because Zeus does shit like that sometimes. And there's like versions that involve um, Ariadne and Phasis, um, Ariadne being one of the patron goddesses of spiders, I believe. Um, and there's versions where Aphrodite gets involved. Lots of different versions, but the, the basic gist of the story is one of vengeance. Vengeance by the gods for an insult or a slight committed against, you know, proper behavior and proper decency and proper subjection to the will of the gods. What does this have to do with Alistar in the game of League of Legends, you ask? Well, basically, his story, too, is one that is found fundamentally about vengeance enacted through the rage of the Minotaur. In this instance, it makes him a somewhat more sympathetic character, where the Minotaur in Greek mythology is just like a monster, like just this terrifying half-man, half-bull thing that kills and eats whatever. Alistar is nominally a good guy. He's a mighty warrior with a fearsome reputation who seeks revenge for the death of his clan at the hands of the Noxian Empire. Though he was enslaved and forced into a life of a gladiator, his unbreakable will was what kept him from truly becoming a beast. Now free of the chains of his former masters, he fights in the name of the downtrodden and the disadvantaged. His rage is much a weapon as his horns, hoofs, and fists. So Alistar takes a little slightly different twist on the classic myth of the Minotaur. And by the way, I'm not in the course of all of this saying that Riot were directly inspired by the original myth of the Minotaur. I don't know if that was part of the design process. I'm just noting that in their version of a Minotaur, vengeance and revenge for a slight is, or for a misdeed is still very much part of the motivation of the character. In Riot's instance, they've chosen, again, Alistar is kind of a microcosm of the very early principles of character design the League of Legends operated on back in the day, which is take an archetype, whatever archetype of some kind, twist it slightly just enough that it's original to us and throw it in the game. And that's how you get champions like Fiddlesticks, who is a scare, Crow, who's scary and has crows, what a twist, and characters indeed um, like 
uh, Nasus, who is literally just Anubis out of Egyptian mythology, is how you get characters like Kale, who is literally just an avenging angel, and characters like Alistar, who is a minotaur. And there's really not a lot more to him than that in a lot of ways. Now, his um, bio, which is a very, very old bio, it really hasn't, as far as I can tell, it really hasn't changed much at all um, from the alpha of the game, really. He is captured by the Noxians after they lure him away from his village. They use him in gladiatorial games for entertainment, and Alistar is like, oh, this really sucks, and I'm about to become an evil, raging beast because of all this torment I'm going through, until a young girl named Aye Aelia, I think, befriends him and arranges for him to escape. And Alistar then decides that, okay, I'm free now, I'm gonna break Noxus apart. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna smash Noxus to pieces and also become an advocate against the political machinations of Noxus. Now, this is a bit of a holdover from the days of the League of Legends. Uh, as we can see here, he calls to light hit things that the Noxian military would prefer remain hidden. Something that, that has made him very unpopular with Noxus as nobles. His charitable works has nerved earned him several philanthropic awards, but served an interesting contrast to the rage and destruction he's known for in battle. This characterization is something of a holdover from the days of the League of Legends itself, back when there was this sort of central sporting event that all of the champions competed in as celebrities. Like, this is celebrity language, like, his charitable work has earned him several philanthropic awards. That's the kind of thing that happens to... Who's giving him philanthropic awards in the new state of League of Legends? There is no central authority for those kinds of things. We have a bunch of disparate city-states in various states of war. It's because it's old. It's because it's a holdover from a time when this story structure made any sense at all. It doesn't so much in the modern days. Nonetheless, um, we have, like, again, noting the parallels between the mythical Minotaur and Alistar, is it's again very much a story about a Minotaur being trapped in some constructed environment that is kind of cruel and seeking to escape. And it also um, contains a little, uh, a little bit of the thematic that's also present in the myth of the Minotaur, which is the redemptive power of the love of women, which is a whole different thing. And actually a little bit of a deep dive that's not really appropriate for this video. So let's have a look at his actual... Well, oh, by the way, um, the Great Barrier, which is where Alastar's tribe lives is this little mountain range right here that separates Noxus from Piltover and Son. It is officially um, part of Noxian territory, but exactly where Alistar's village is on this map, I don't actually know. Necrit might know. Uh, he tends to know these sorts of things, but me, no, I don't really have any idea. So, Alistar's character design. Like I said, Alistar's a Minotaur, and he's a Minotaur, and there isn't really, like, outside of him being purple with blue hair, which is an unusual color choice for a bull, that's, that, that's really kind of all there is to him. He is stereotypically a Minotaur, down to wearing a loincloth, and having chains around his arms, signifying the fact that he's been imprisoned or been a prisoner for a while. Outside of that, there's really not very much to him at all. There's nothing, like, because in, in the concept of the story, at least, Alistar is supposed to be a member of this proud tribe of people with, like, with their own culture, with their own history, and, like, they, they've got a whole, there's a whole long line of, of things, there's something to them, right? They have a culture, they have a history, they have an aesthetic, they presumably have, you know, their own way of producing clothes, they presumably have their own sort of gestures, and their own symbols, and their own everything, but Alistar, no, he wears the gladiatorial outfit that he escaped from Noxus in, and hasn't gotten the chains taken off his hands yet, which seems like something a blacksmith could probably do for him if, if, if he wanted to. He's very much still defined by his role as a former Noxian prisoner. And it makes him very generic. Like, and by the way, why does he only have three fingers? That's a little bit odd. Like, he's a half-human, half-bull thing, and bulls don't have... They have two... So they have double splits on their hooves, I believe, but they don't have three. Anyway, that's digits. That's a whole different discussion. He's generic. He's, he's painfully, exceptionally, completely generic and not, to be honest, very interesting at all. There, there really isn't a lot to talk about with him there. Like, he's got 
red eyes, which is sort of a callback to the stereotypical myth of, you know, red flag to a bull that red has some kind of connection to aggression with bulls. It also has a connection to aggression in, in general, but there's like if you just look at the character design, there's really not a lot about him to suggest that he's more than a rampaging escaped beast. Like visually, there's not a lot that communicates that. He looks like a vicious, dangerous minotaur who will kill you as soon as look at you. And he doesn't look like a thinking, feeling being who has a lot more to him, who like who has some sense of 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 culture, who has some sense of heritage or something like. Because I would assume the first thing you he would do upon escape is find some clothes for himself that express him, his culture, the culture that was taken from him, the culture that he's trying to avenge, the people that he's trying to avenge. Like that would be the first thing on my mind if if I was a Avenger hellbent on taking vengeance for my people is to represent them in some way in my aesthetics and my visuals and that's not really there with Alistar because well he's a really old character design made of old stereotypes that were never really criticized in the update process he and I, I don't know if Riot or ever gonna make substantial changes to him really because again much like characters like Cillian much like characters like F Fiddlesticks and like most characters that are from the alpha and beta phases He's so old and he's been with the game for so long and he's been popular for so long that the way he looks right now, the way that, that this character is expressed is kind of fundamental um, to who he is in League of Legends. And so within Riot, there might be an understandable reluctance to make two radical changes because this is who Alistar players expect him to be and this is what they expect him to look like, which I think is a pity because there's a lot more... I would be more interested to see them actually draw a lot more influence from the Minoan myth of the Minotaur, like to to maybe construct him as some kind of divine punishment for the sins of the father and sort of have him go through a redemption arc of trying to make up for bad things that were done f by his parents or like something that expands on the myth and mythology of his clan and like what are they like these bull people this race of creatures these bull people that we never see anywhere like i don't believe actually in looking around on the league of legends map and and looking at concept art which i have spent quite a fair amount of time doing i don't believe i've ever seen any sketches of any other members of alistar's tribe of his people like was his tribe the last tribe of his kind at all in League of Legends? Do they still exist, this bull people? And, I mean, the thing that Riot are probably gonna do, if we're honest, the thing they're probably gonna do is they're gonna turn him into a Vestaya. I mean, I have to assume, because that's the bird-human hybrid creatures that they've sort of invented for Ionia, and Ionia also has a conflict with Noxus, so you can keep the, you can keep the whole thing about him wanting vengeance on Noxus thing. So they're probably just going to turn him into a Vestaya and imbue him with Ionian aesthetics, which makes sense in the reconsolidated version of the new League of Legends lore universe, but I feel like it's kind of a pity. I feel like it would be cool if, like, there was a race of bull creatures that can still be Vestaya, but they just live, like, in Noxus or in the Great Barrier Mountains because they came there and they've settled there and that's, that's their ancestral homeland and they don't care that much about the Ionian thing. Except, of course, Vestaya probably can't really exist as people outside of the magical atmosphere of Ionia or something, I don't know. I mean, you can always invent a reason, but I feel like just consolidating Alistar into the Vestaya would be kind of a waste. It would be boring. I, I really prefer that they do something more interesting and expand a little bit more on the League of Legends universe with him, because like, what, what would the culture of a race of bull creatures be like? Like, how do you incorporate the mythology and the imagery that we associate with bulls in our culture like because a lot of cultures all across the world have certain imagery certain certain connotations and, and associations associated with bulls because we've, we've kept cattle for 10,000 years like that's it's a rich well to mine from like i would be particularly interested if like they incorporated some like uh, of the many, many African mythologies, like what, because there's a lot of, this, pl plenty of nomadic peoples in Africa who have, you know, opinions on, on various types of cattle. And like, what would it be like if we incorporated some of that rather than just having him go to be met part of magic Asia in League of Legends or be part of magic Europe in Noxus and Demacia? Like there's an opportunity here to expand on the character, to do something 
new and much more interesting to make some kind of radical redesign of him that I would be very interested to see, although I'm not honestly very confident that we ever will. The primary criticism of Alistar, though, really, is that he's been in the game for like nine years, and this... and this is... That's about as much as Riot could be bothered to write about him. That's about as much story as they could be bothered to tell about him. Which is frankly a pity. Oh, by the way, an interesting little parallel. In Alistar's, like, old lore, he was uh, he was uh, captured by Noxus. He was used as a, as a gladiator beast until a young child befriended him and managed to set him free. And then in gratitude for being freed like that, he dedicated himself to doing good in the world. That is literally exactly the same as Nunu's old lore in that um, Willemp, the, the, the yeti, was this wild animal that was the wild beast creature that nonetheless had a nobility of soul and spirit that was captured by, I believe it was the Frost Guard in the old Nunu lore. And they kept him captive and they abused him and mistreated him until a young boy named Nunu befriended the beast and made arrangements for the beast to escape. And then they became fast friends and Willem dedicated himself to doing good in the world. Like, it's literally exactly blow for blow the same story that the two characters have, which again microcosm of how Riot used to approach champion design. Just do whatever generic thing will work, slap it together, put it in the game, move on to the next one, because we're releasing champions every two weeks and we're holding the game together with spit and duct tape um, while hundreds of thousands of players flood in. And it was a very chaotic time for the company, but nonetheless, he's been with the game for so long and he's been such an iconic character. It will never cease to be a disappointment to me that Riot have not been able to do just a little bit more just a little bit more for their older champions to give them like something. Have some writer spend like an hour on some Thursday doing just like a little bit or hire some fan artist to make a comic about him or something like it's, I, I always get sad when I see these old, really old champions just kind of sit there with nothing when every time we get a new champion, when every time there's a new release or a visual and gameplay update, it's like they dump a truckload of shit, like animated shorts and comics and stories and like tie-ins with merchandise and here's an in-game reference to the character that we've added to the game and ah ha ha ha, lore galore everywhere. And then all the old champions are just there like, yeah, I've got two paragraphs. That That's, that's pretty good. I've got two. It's better than one. Better than one. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe button and a like button and a comment. Do those things and bell icon and so on. I have to tell you that because that's YouTube law, is I have to say those things. Um, yeah, also, uh, Patreon. Patreon, I do have that. If you have a dollar that you don't mind not having, then I would like to have that dollar because it helps me do stuff like have a place to live and clothes to wear, which is nice. Clothes, like clothes, I've, especially now, like like in, in October, November coming around, clothes are just, they're in right now. Being, ha having stuff on your body that protects you from the terrifying cold of the world outside is, is super in vogue right now. If you didn't like the video, of course, you can click a dislike button as well. Although I should warn you that the dislike button is housed at the center of an ancient maze. Um, Maze? Maze. Ma maze. How do you pronounce that word? M-A-Z-E. Maze. Yeah. An ancient maze constructed by an ancient Greek philosopher um, who originally created in order to house like the monstrous offspring of some ancient king whose wife had a really weird fetish. Uh, but nowadays, like it's mostly just abandoned, but the dislike button is in there. And like there's some old traps. Most of them are kind of rusty, so I don't know if they still work. Uh, and I do believe a family of like... Um, monkeys and baboons have moved in there and they don't like people walk like walking around in their territory you just like if you hear something screaming at you just run um and i mean i think there's like holes in the walls nowadays you could probably just kind of walk straight through it's not much of a labyrinth uh to be honest but the dislike button is in there and like if you just try not to fall into the bottomless hell pits within which dwell giant octopuses you should probably be fine thank you very much for watching